people. How's it going? Long time no see. I'm going to do us another video. Got a video to talk about the weather. What's going on with the weather on Earth? I hope I'm melting. Well, we are in the interglacial period, so it's going to get warmer as we proceed through that particular part of the, uh, the environment. So, um, I'm going to try. I wonder why that won't open up. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. All right. Okay, how to predict volcano eruptions and weather on Earth. Gravitational influences of the Earth and our moon from planets in our solar system in certain alignments. Keyword is alignments. Cause Earth's volcanoes to erupt and affect Earth's weather patterns. Okay, moving along at the speed of sound here. This is what's going on out here. We're in a solar system. It's, it's, it's actually quite a busy solar system. And there's gravitational influences going on. Okay, we're going to get into these influences and how they are affecting the Earth's weather. That's why it's so warm this year. All right, now these gravitational influences do this to our poor little blue marble here. She gets all wound up, flexed up, and abused by these gravitational anomalies and uh, starts shaking and popping, releasing uh, volcanoes and magma and earthquakes and tsunamis and tectonic plate slips, you name it. All right, here's the uh, solar system. You know, everything's cruising around. They all have their own little orbits. They have their own rotational speeds. And, uh, you know, they're just, uh, just cruising, you know, counterclockwise. All going counterclockwise, and um, that's it around the sun. Now we're going to get into the gravitational influences this particular year, and why we have gravitational influences. Now, this particular year, like I said in the other video, all the planets are on one side of the sun. Okay, what's going on with that? Like, who cares? Let's move on, right? No, what's going on is all of these planets on one side of the sun are pulling a higher percentage of charged particles from the sun. Radiation, thermal energy. So the increase in thermal energy going in the direction of all the planets has gone up exponentially higher. Um, we can see what happened to uh, Mars here. Okay, a few months ago, when, he's, when all the planets ended up on, on one side of the sun, it went from this to this. this. This happened because of thermal energy, an increase, an exponential increase of thermal energy with the sun and the other planets. The other planets pulled more, had a higher gravitational pull on the sun, and it pulled more of the charged particles from the sun towards Mars. Mars is in the crossfire. We're in the crossfire also right now. We've got a big alignment coming up on the full moon. Now the full moon is a, the moon plays a, a big, uh, uh, is a huge player in our uh, tectonic plate uh, activity, volcanic activity, uh, volcanicity. I heard volcanicity to the other day. The other day I had to go and look it up in the dictionary, you know, uh, volcanicity. But anyways, it's, uh, it's just noise. It's magma pressure blowing up and settling down. We're talking about uh, seismic activity here. So anyways, this is what happened. Now, this alignment happened five times in the last 120 years. I'll put the dates in underneath the video. It, it, it just, just trust me on this one. Um, so, and, and uh, what we have is observable, repeatable physical evidence. Because every time... All the planets went on one side of the sun, Mars turned into a dust ball. And it wasn't because of, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, yeah, what do you call it, the electric universe is a thunderbolt, electricity is doing it. It's, it's just common sense. You have a, a huge gravitational tug on one side of the solar system with all the planets. You're going to have an exponential increase of thermal energy going, especially going out to the inner planets, the inner four planets, Mercury, um, Venus, Earth, and Mars. All right. 
So as you can see around the planet, we're on fire. Um, you know, uh, Europe's like uh, the warmest they've ever been. Uh, we got forest fires all over the place in the, in the out west. Uh, droughts, uh, things, things are a lot harder than normal. And that's because of this increase in thermal energy caused by the inner solar planet and the outer solar system. So anyways, here's uh, today's representation. This is today right here. You have Venus, Mercury, Earth, Mars, and then on the outer, outer out past the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, asteroid belt, you have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, okay? All on one side of the sun, pulling that thermal energy. We have, we have data, right, that we can page back to and, and see that we've had a 3,000% increase in volcanic activity every time <clears throat> we have the planets aligning on one side of the sun. Okay, all right. Just driving that home. I don't know why. I just seem, it seems like we need to drive that home. People are going flat earth on me. They're going electric universe on me. They're, uh, they're coming up saying, we really don't know what's going on. You know, we got, we got to get some uh, more money. So we can do some more research. I'm getting to the point where maybe they don't want to know what's going on because then they won't get any more money for research. <laughs> Uh, so those letter agencies, those alphabet letter agencies we all know about. They need more money, you know. All right, this is Kyle McCross. Just give me an idea what's going on. I'm just putting this stuff up here so you get a, you get a tangible idea. It's, you know, of what's happening. This is a Kyle cross alignment with the planets. It's a balance. I mean, this is like the perfect balance, okay? And then you get this. This is, this is overreacting. It's not this bad, but, I mean, you have this type of arrangement. And you have a, a larger thermal pull of energy going out, okay? So an increase. You have a, a marketable exponential increase in thermal energy going in your direction, okay? You got the horns up there. In your direction, okay? All right. So this is a pretty good one. It's happened in June. We have all the planets right here on this side of the sun. And you have a, a corona mass ejection, boof, just going right out. I don't know what, what the um, the size of that corona mass ejection is, but it looked pretty significant. Now this this is this plays into uh, Shaughnessy's law of gravity. You can you can check out my other videos. You want to really learn how gravity works and uh, get going on some uh, you know anti gravity technology. It's all yours. Um, it's like, it just go back to the simple, observable, physical evidence, repeatable evidence we see every day on planet Earth, right? We have a moon high tide and a moonless high tide. Check my other videos, I got the gif of it. And what the moon does, is it pulls the whole gravitational field of the planet towards it. And ex what it does is it, it lowers the gravitational field on the opposite side, okay? And that causes a moonless high tide. Every day we see this. It's, it's, it's like, uh, it's just so simple, it's, it's ridiculous. We're not going to get any research money to research that because it's, it's already a known deal. Um, well, to people that have watched my videos. But anyways, um, this, this also happens here. What you've done is you've pulled the gravitational field of the sun to one, one section with, with the planetary alignments, and you lower the gravitational field, and you get yourself a release of the coronal mass ejection. Now, that being said, that's not the only reason you get a corona mass ejection. Corona mass ejections uh, can be traced to planetary alignments. Every corona mass ejection will have a repeatable, observable planetary alignment to it, okay? Then, obviously, there's multiple planetary alignments and there's multiple um, sun cycles. So, every sun cycle... Uh, matches up with planetary alignment. So if you're in the seventh year of the eleventh year uh, sun cycle, and um, you uh, you know you have uh, you know a planetary alignment, you can connect these two uh, you know uh, schedules together, these two alignments to, together, these two timetables together, and start building data. So you can start forecasting when the probability of a corona mass ejection is going to occur, okay? Just like you can do this with 
uh, the system I'm talking about with uh, tracking planetary alignments. You can you can utilize the moon's metonic cycle, the uh, planetary alignments, the already uh, historical data of earthquakes. Okay, so we can go back and track where the moon was, where the planets were when we had an earthquake, uh, volcanic eruption, and so on and so forth, and make uh, you know a software that will do the forecasting for you. It'll tell you when the probability of a particular volcano is going to erupt. Okay, it's just, it's that simple people. We don't need any research money, we just need somebody who knows how to um, funnel in four or five, um, you know, already available simulators and write up some data, points of data in an analog system. And we got, it, 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 you can have it available for uh, anybody for free on the internet. They can go and uh, check it out themselves. And um, I know a lot of the agencies, the earthquake agencies around the world, the volcanic you know, activity agencies around the world, they go to the people that live in the foothills of these uh, volcanoes saying, hey, look, the volcano could erupt because it's rumbling. Well, and they look at them and you can't blame them. It's a big deal for a lot of these people to get up and, you know, pack up and move. And they're, you know, the argument is, well, <clears throat> it didn't erupt last year and it was rumbling. So why you know, are we going to run this year? So uh, case in point, Guatemala, they lost 500 some odd people down there. Well, well, if they had this system that I'm bringing out and I'm putting forward here is, well, we could say, well, you know, exactly two, 300 years ago, the planetary alignments were exactly as they are today. So we have a high probability that this volcano is going to erupt based on the moon's metonic cycle the planetary alignments and the season that we're in. Okay, so all these things tie in and you can make a better forecast. And right now we're in a reactionary forecasting system. The ground's rumbling. They put out a warning. We can do better than that, people. We can do better than that. All right, so this is it. The asteroid belt also plays an integral part of it. The planetary moon systems, like other planets, have other moons. They also flex the gravitational field in the inner solar system. That also affects our weather. Beyond me, how they, um, they said they've uh, recorded a gravitational wave from two stars crashing into each other. And I'm like, well, how can they record a gravitational wave with all this gravitational noise that's bombarding the planet? I mean, how do they isolate the moon's gravitational effect on the planet? How do they isolate the sun's gravitational effect on the planet? How do they isolate all the planets in the solar system's uh, gravitational noise so they can hear this wave that happened uh, 10 billion years ago or whatever? I, I, I you know, I, I don't understand it. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm just not a smart guy, but... Um, asteroid belt, another big player, like I was just, uh, just started to say. These, these, all these things need to be taken into consideration, put in the software, so they can predict. Um, I sent this system a more detailed uh, technological written up um, application for um, uh, some money, some grant money to uh, put this in a software from the USGS. I missed it by a month, so next month I'll try it. This stuff I'm talking about is copyrighted. You can use it as long as you're not trying to make money on it. Okay, you want, I'm, I'm here to try to save some people from getting blasted from paraplastic, uh, paraplastic, uh, what do they call it, those uh, flows, paraplastic flows that just come out at a thousand miles an hour and kill everything in its path, including the animals and people. So we're here to, we're here to uh, you know, try to, try to save some lives uh, in the future. So this is your typical uh, corona mass ejection. Again, with this system I'm putting out there, you can now forecast when there's going to be a corona mass ejection. The corona mass ejection is caused by planetary alignments. Okay, there's no mystery. Mystery's gone. All, all done. All right, hey, you can all go home now. It's all going to be on the software soon. So um, you can predict that, and then you can predict the ramifications of a, of a corona mass ejection, okay, and take appropriate action, which you really don't have much you can do except for go on the ground and hide if we do get a major one. So um, we can shut down the, uh, the power plant so they don't burn up the power station transformers, which by the way, take a year from uh, the date of order to get one. 
and there's only like two or three companies that are actually building them today. So we did get something that was a sizable Corona mass ejection. Um, take take the grid off, take the power plants off, just just disconnect the grounds, go into the uh, transformers. I sent this information out. It fell on the deaf ears. Um, quite a few, about a decade ago, I used, I've generated power for 30 years now. Now I do YouTube videos, see? Yeah, yeah. Things are moving on. All right, that's it, people. All right, my name's John Shaughnessy. And uh, these are my books. There is Something About the Moon, awesome book. Wrote that with Wendy Salter. Awesome research about there in uh, Great Britain, England specifically. And, uh, you know, I got a pyramid gravity force book on how the pyramids work. Got to update that. Uh, second edition is coming out. So that might be worth some money because it's got a ton of mistakes in it. Oh, my God. The, the uh, grammar police are still hunting me down for that mess. And, um, you know, obviously you can get a hold of me, websites, uh, emails, things of that nature. So uh, keeping it real, people. Got any questions, comments, share this stuff. It's your planet, too. And, um, you know, peace out.